Welcome to What God Can Do Ministries. Today I just want to talk about something that's so important that it's neglected in the church today, and that is the importance of office in the church. And um, I find that people are offended if someone's called an apostle or a prophet or bishop, um, and they, they take a stance that titles are unnecessary. Uh, if you take that stance, you have to dispute the scriptures because Paul always quoted himself as called to be an apostle. He always mentioned his office. He always mentioned that it was God who appointed him. He always mentioned in his epistles who he was and what he was. And, um, you know, there's um, people who were apostles, there were people who were pastors, there were people who were teachers, and there were people who were prophets, and it wasn't a shameful thing to have the title. There are bishops, and we are told to desire earnestly the office of a bishop. He that desires it desires a good thing, and yet you find a lot of people, through their prejudice, um, don't like titles. Now, no man, and this is where it's important, in Hebrews 5, says this um, in verse 1, For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins, who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way, for that he himself also is compassed with infirmity, and by reason hereof he ought, as for the people, so also for himself to offer for sins. And no man taketh this honour unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. So also Christ glorified not himself, um, to be made an high priest. But he had said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. As he saith also in another place, Thou art a priest for ever after the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears, unto him that was able to save him from death, was heard, in that he feared. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered, and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them who obeyed him, called of God and high priest after of the order of Melchizedek. Now, it's interesting when we look at the scriptures, we find that Aaron didn't appoint himself. He was selected by God, called by God, appointed by God. Moses carried out the consecration as he did for the sons of Aaron. But what you have to understand, it was an appointment of God. And God also appointed Jesus and called him. And he declared he was his beloved son. And we need to understand that when God calls a man, and when God appoints a man, it's ordained of God. And it goes on here, and this is what I want to emphasize. So often when you go to a prayer meeting, you have people screaming out and crying out and uh, thinking that, I don't know, I suppose they think God is deaf. <laughs> I don't know what they do, but um, it's they usually quote this scripture, who in the days of his flesh, this is Jesus, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, was heard in that he feared. Jesus Christ faced death for every man. He who knew no sin, he who was to be the sin bearer of all those who would believe on him and accept his sacrifice, he cried with great tears and crying out, because he faced something that to him was so foreign, he became sin who knew no sin. God, the holy God, and Jesus Christ 
as God and as man, faced the fact he was to become sin, who knew no sin, and he was to taste death for every man. And he cried out and asked God, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And he prayed three times and asked. Now do understand this, that Jesus Christ, the wonderful Son of God, very God of very God, he cried out and he prayed as a man because he did not die as God, as some people blasphemously put. He couldn't, God could not die. And the Godhead part of Jesus Christ ascended when he dismissed his spirit into Father's hand. His spirit did not die, nor did it see corruption, nor did his body see corruption. His spirit went to God the Father who gave it, and he went into the tomb, and he was raised by the glory of God the Father on the third day, the scripture says. Now let me make it clear, Jesus did not suffer in hell. He did not need to be born again in hell. That is blasphemy. It is totally false. What he did is he paid the price on Calvary's tree. And when he said it is finished, it was finished. The devil was finished. Sin was finished. The penalty of sin was finished. The judgment of God was finished in him. He became the propitiation for our sins and he ever lives to make intercession for us. Now understand that this Jesus let out strong cries, but there's no one today who's a true son of God who would be in the same position. Because I am not a sin bearer and nor are you. I don't actually face death because I've passed from death unto life. I've been born again of God's spirit. When Jesus rose from the dead, it says in Romans 6, I rose in him 2,000 years ago. There is no question of death, nor is there a question of being a sin bearer. He took my sin. I don't bear my sin. He bore it. I don't have to suffer. He suffered for me. Now, am I persecuted? Yes. Do I find people oppose the truth? Yes. Do people treat us wrongly? Yes, most certainly. Do they lie about us? They tell all manner of lies because they are of their father, the devil. Religious people always lie. It's their gift. And they're driven by the God of this world. But what you have to understand is Jesus Christ, the wonderful Son of God, bore your sin and my sin in his body on the tree. And he died to it when he dismissed his spirit. Now, had he not dismissed his spirit, he would still be hanging on the cross because he couldn't die. He was God. He created heaven and earth. There was no way that he died except as a man. When he dismissed his spirit into Father's hand, his soul did not see corruption. When God the Father's glory came on the third day and raised him from the tomb, he came out totally victorious. And I just want to point out that he folded up his own grave clothes. He did not need anyone to release him. He came out clean. He came out pure. He came out holy. He had borne the sin of the whole world. He had dealt with it once and for all, my Bible says. And I happen to believe it. I'm a Bible-believing Christian. And so should you be. So do understand, when you come to the Scriptures, don't let people persuade you because they find a place where it says, oh, Jesus was heard for his strong crying and tears unto him who's able to save. I, I have a relationship with God the Father, as I trust you do. I'm a son of God, so should you be. Now, I do not, have to shout at God. I never do. I know a God who loves me. I know a God who sent his son to redeem me. And I love him and I respond to him. Do I make mistakes? Yes. 
Have I ever sinned since I was born again? Yes, of course. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth's not in us. But we have this treasure in an earthen vessel that the excellency of the power might be of God and not of us. I hear people say, oh, you know, I'd never do this, I'd never do that. Be very careful. My Bible says in Galatians 6, 1, uh, you know, if a brother be overtaken in a fault, let those that are spiritual, that means those who've understood the truths of scripture and the truths of life in Christ, let them restore such a one in a spirit of meekness and gentleness. They, they themselves be overcome with the same thing. Please be careful. When you point the finger, you're going to be in trouble. If you don't understand, my God sent us with the ministry of restoration and reconciliation. And Jesus Christ is the one who reconciles us to God the Father through his sacrifice, through his precious blood that was shed for us on Calvary's tree. He rose, he ascended into heaven, and he leads captivity captive. Believe the word of God and let the reality of it sink into your heart. You have a father who loves you. He cares for you and he adopted you into sonship and he will not de-adopt you. Once you come into life, you're a son for all eternity. God bless you. Keep in God's grace.